Well, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from anxiety and depression. Today I want to talk about the role of self-love in healing from depression. And I want to start out with a quotation, actually a story, from a book called 12 Steps to a Compassionate Life, written by Karen Armstrong. And she tells a story about a rabbi called Albert Freelander. He had grown up in Nazi Germany, and as a child, he was bewildered and distressed by the vicious anti-Semitic propaganda that assailed him on all sides. One night, when he was eight years old, he deliberately lay awake and made a list of all his good qualities. He told himself firmly that he was not what the Nazis had said, that he had talents and special gifts of the heart and mind, which he enumerated himself one by one. Finally, he vowed that if he survived, he would make use of those qualities to build a better world. This story is a good example of somebody who actually developed self-love. This is especially important to healing from depression because one of the symptoms of depression is excessive or inappropriate guilt. Uh, one person who really embodied this was Mike Wallace, the um, uh, newscaster who said he felt lower than a snake's belly. So, how do we practice self-love? The first key is to separate yourself from your condition. Tell yourself that you are not depression, you are a person who has the condition of depression. That basically you are a normal person responding to an abnormal condition. And that the condition of depression does not define who you are, but only how you are suffering. Another way you can practice self-love is to speak lovingly to yourself. Unfortunately, oftentimes when the depressed person listens to the inner voice, it's very critical. It can compare you to others, it can put you down, and it can basically say you're worthless. Now, just as Rabbi Freelander didn't listen to what the Nazis said about him, didn't listen to all of their negative propaganda, so you too can ignore the negative propaganda of your critical inner voice. In addition to ignoring the critical inner voice, you can replace it with a positive one, just as Rabbi Freelander did. So if the inner voice says you're no good, you say I'm fine. If uh, the inner voice says you always mess up, you say I'm doing the best you can. Uh, if the inner voice says you're worthless, you say I am a child of God and I am love, etc. Just basically turn the criticism into its opposite. A third way to practice self-love is to practice self-forgiveness. Here are some of the incidents that my clients still are not forgiving themselves for. Going off medication, dropping out of school, having a relapse, getting into drugs and alcohol, passing up a golden business opportunity, or having an unhappy marriage. Rather than self-blame, you can practice self-forgiveness by realizing you were doing the best you could with the information and awareness you had at the time. This does not happen overnight. This is a long process, but eventually you can have the freedom of letting go of all the things you beat yourself up for and have a certain freedom uh, for not having to hang on to the past. As it says in the book of Psalms, you are a child of the universe, fearfully and wonderfully made. In all of history, there's never been anyone quite like you. Accept this truth about yourself and you'll be going a long way to practicing self-love. Now I would like to close by uh, with a poem by American poet Walt Whitman uh, that I think will really, really encapsulate everything we've been talking about. He says, I celebrate myself and sing to myself. I am larger, better than I thought. It did not know I held so much goodness. This is Douglas Block. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you want to learn more about this work, go to healingfromdepression.com or click on the links in the closing credits. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you.